Hello, everybody. Welcome back after lunch. So we have Tushar and Philip with us. We'll be talking about fetch code. So before we get into the session, hello, guys. How are you doing? And hope you had a good lunch. <laughs> well, uh, I think you're muted, uh, Tushar. Uh, hello? Yes. Cool. So, so, so yeah, cool. Nice, nice. No. So could, yeah. you, could you guys like give right. us a brief brief intro on how you you know got on to the project so uh, this was a uh, google summer of code project okay so uh, mm -hmm. about code was a mentoring organization so mm -hmm. i was in touch with people from like uh, 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 around may 2019 so uh, at that time, at uh, around uh, September, October, he proposed that we should do this pro pro project. So at that time, uh, we got on this. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Sir. So, yeah, on, on my side, so Philippe Moyan, so I'm the the lead maintainer for this this project called About Code, which is an umbrella project for many tools we do all in Python, mm -hmm. and it's open source, of course. It's it's to help analyze code. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been part of the Google Summer of Code for a long, long period of time as a mentoring organization. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, so Tushar was project was selected out of like, I think we had about 110 uh, submissions at the time, uh, together with uh, four other students to be uh, part of the, the Summer of Code project together. And mm -hmm. now, you would wondering why why would you care for having a tool to download things? It's, it's super easy. Actually, mm -hmm. in practice, it's a bit more complicated than that when you want to download any kind of thing. Ah. And uh, and that's what fetch code is about. So. Interesting. This will be really you know nice to know and a great talk to have. So let's get right to it. So I'll I'll just host the you know PPT as well, and you guys can start off. Yeah. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tushar Goyel. And hi, my name is uh, Philippe Omredan. So we will talk about uh, Fetch Code, a smart code downloader. Uh, it's a project that uh, was made in Google Summer of 2020. So let's start. Okay. Uh, we will be discussing about each and every uh, outline in uh, details. So. Let's get it. Right. So, the, b before we go to talk about fetch code, there's two, three things we want to talk about to set the stage. The first one is something that's called package URLs. And package URL is a, a project that's been adopted by by many as a way to identify packages. It's, it's a simple problem, but every package manager platform they all use different ways to identify packages. And we want to be able also to not only identify, but also uh, locate and eventually provision, meaning download uh, a software package. And to give a stupid example, think about the package name file. You know, it's a very common name. It could be a package on PyPy. There's one package called file. It could be file which is libmagic and the command line utility used on Linux, named file. It could be file as a node package on NPM or many different incarnations of that thing. So the, the thing is, it's hard to know uh, which package manager it belongs to. And if you go next, if you think about a couple of examples, uh, that would be an example. So super simple syntax. We have a PKG prefix that we use as a scheme, like if it were HTTP. Then the type, which is the ecosystem, so PyPy, Debian, NPM, and else. And then a name and a version. And it's it's meant to be super simple and obvious, and saying that it is obvious in most cases. If you go next. And so this solution really needs to, to have a package URL to call also Perl that can be used to identify a package for any type of package. 
And that's the, 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 the formal definition has so PKG prefix, it's, it's kind of unique and uh, we can eventually register that as an official um, scheme for URLs at uh, the, the YANA, so that's part of the plan. It has a type that's mandatory, which tells what the package is about. So PyPy is an example of a type, uh, NPM is another one. And you must have at least a name. Everything else is optional. Um, so if you go back to the previous slide for a second, in the case of a Django package, the type is PyPy, the name is Django, and the version is 3.1. And with this little bit of information, you can infer many different things. You know where to fetch the downloads, you know what's the version, you can call the API from PyPy to get many information about these descriptions, uh, newer and older versions, uh, you could use that also to, uh, uh, for instance, look up in a database that has information about Django, in particular, a security database that may have information about uh, vulnerability that may exist in Django. If you go back next. And next. And so that's for package URLs. And it's really important because that's a library that's used in Scan Code Toolkit, which is another, another tool to identify all the packages that can be detected. So scan code is a tool to uh, find the origin of code and its license. And it's used, it, it's really the industry standard for license detection in particular. But it has a, a, the ability to detect uh, many different package manifests. It's able to parse a set of the by uh, using DST requirements that txt which is a bit simpler but not entirely trivial uh, it can parse ruby gems uh, uh, both uh, gem file and uh, uh, ruby specs and hundreds of different formats of packages and it's able to normalize that and assign to each of them a package url and if you go next and that's done with a library within scan code called package code and that's where you have effectively all these different uh, utilities and code to uh, correctly normalize all the different package metadata from many different sources uh, in one place. Think about, for a second, for instance, the Debian package versus a Node package. Conceptually, they're very similar. You know, you have an archive, you have a, a name and a version but technically, they've all used different uh, minute variations on how this uh, metadata exists. Maybe one package will talk about the description, another one will talk about the summary. Both of these fields may be the description. So the whole purpose of package code is to normalize that so that we can talk about the same, same thing across all these different packages. And every Thing there is identified by a package URL. And eventually, uh, 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 what fetch code does, and that's what leads us to fetch code, is the ability to deal both with uh, uh, the package URLs and the URLs. And, and that's nice. And that's up to you uh, to start. Yeah. So, uh, so let's get on fetch code. OK. So, fetch code. Uh, Fetch code is a library. Okay, so what does fetch code does? You can give it any URL or any package URL. It will fetch it for you. Okay, so uh, what we does here like uh, we have like uh, three type of URLs for now: HTTP, uh, FTP, and version control system based URLs. Okay, so to down uh, the HTTP and FTP part was uh, handled by the requests and FTP lib itself. Uh, and if we get on version control system based URLs, okay. So uh, for that, we have used PIPs code. Okay, we have rendered PIPs code. Okay, uh, uh, like PIP provides an API. Uh, like PIP provides an API, but uh, it's uh, not uh, it's not easy to use. So we have to fork the PIP code. Okay, we will talk it about uh, we talk about it uh, in detail further. Okay, so like it uh, fetch code also does that. You can give any uh, as Philip talked earlier. Like uh, you can give any package URL or URL as input. 
it will get all the rich metadata for you like the package code was doing by scanning the code base we will get it by you uh, by reading the url and making the uh, package history calls to the respective uh, respective api calls uh, so what were the problems faced in the version control system now okay. so like as all we know uh, most of us use git okay so for download so like you directly do git clone and get but there are still many other uh, version control systems like uh, SVN, Mercury, okay, a uh, bazaar. Uh, so what uh, it, uh, like it provides code for downloading any kind of uh, version control system based URL. Like uh, uh, if you uh, if you have tried it, uh, uh, you can directly pip install and you can get the you can feed the URL and it will download it for you. Okay, but. Uh, 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 so what we did it here, like we have poked pips code and made a wrapper function around it. So we can get uh, uh, like pip is used by uh, many people. Okay, so we have just poked the pips code and made a wrapper function around it, which uh, which uh, which can do that stuff easily. Okay, like uh, pip uh, uh, pip provides all the uh, functions. So we have uh, just uh, we have took uh, the note of those functions and made a wrapper function around them and. Uh, like we took the backend functions for BCS based URLs for all type of BCS based URLs and made it up. Okay. So the next step is URL to package data, the package history thing I was talking about. So uh, if we see this URL itself, okay. So it has github.com slash next p slash scan code toolkit slash uh, uh, three, okay. So slash version 3.2.0 RC1. Okay. So what we can see from it here, like the host is GitHub, okay. Uh, the ho uh, the host or the organization or the person who has made this code base is Nixby. Uh The co code base uh, name is CanCode Toolkit, and the current version is uh, three point two point zero point RC one. Okay, so uh, package URL does this all does all this stuff for you. Okay, so in patch code, what we are doing like. Okay, you are just able to get this six components. So there are many components for our core base, like it's code URL, it's download URL, and it's licenses. So what we do in fetch code, well, you can give it any URL, a package URL. Uh, it will get all the licenses, code view, download, uh, and many type of URLs that package code gives uh, by hitting the uh, package history APIs. Like if you have given me uh, pkg colon npm slash uh, full bar at the rate 2.3.0. Okay, so what we'll do? Uh, it will take the full bar and it will it will so, uh, it will hit the npm registry and get all that data. Then the data is passed and uh, provided as a package code model. Okay. Uh, so uh, the currently the library hasn't been released. Okay, so we have working on the release part of it. Uh, so uh, we have we are working on this part of it and uh, you can also uh, like uh, we are not giving support to many apis uh, uh, we have given to support like six apis till now like if i remember uh, npm ruby uh, pip uh, cargo uh, github and bitbucket like uh, like these six have been supported till now uh, but we uh, we want to add support for more apis like uh, there are many apis so they, which uh, which handle packages so we want to add support for them. And we also want to include package indexes in them. OK, and we also want that our fetch code should be able to download any Docker images. Like uh, currently, we have done like HTTP, FTP, and VCS. So in future, we also want that we should be able to download Docker images as well. OK, uh, so uh, like, yeah, the last point, it's a, it's a very good point. Uh, dependent code, yeah, dependent code is a new project for us right now. OK. Uh, what dependent code will be like uh, you give a code base uh, and there are many, uh, every code has code base has many dependencies on it okay like it will be have a requirement txt or setup or py or uh, there are many dependencies on it uh, so what dependent code does it's a it's a uh, dependency resolver okay uh, uh, so what uh, you can uh, we haven't made it till now just it's just an idea but we'll start working on it like it will be a major user of fetch code as well like uh, it will be like a universal package manager. Like, yeah, uh, for, uh, for example, if a code base has two, like, uh, uh, like a, it, it can have the package.json and requirement.txt both. So uh, uh, 
uh, but like you did npm install it got get all the npm packages for you but still the python packages are remaining so what it does dependent code will be a universal packet manager uh, so Thank you. Uh, you can check out the project fetch code. Uh, uh, you can also check out the chat channel, uh, get a channel where we talk about it and uh, about Twitter talk. So, Felipe. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, and uh, so, if there's a uh, you, you have questions, uh, we've reserved a few minutes for, for question. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the other thing is that this project, together with the other projects uh, uh, on about code, will will be part also of the Google Summer of Code 2021, hopefully. And um, so there's there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Um, friendly community, pretty active. Um, so you, you're welcome to to join if you're interested, and you'll be always nicely welcomed. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Tushar and Philip, for uh, the nice talk. I think we are having a few of the questions. Let's see. Uh, so let me uh, ask a few of the questions here. So, So uh, one of the audience is asking that what are the question like problems we could have faced or we can face. So are there any challenges uh, uh, in using fetch code or how what's the stability from the stability perspective at which stage is this project is? Go ahead, Shaw. Yeah. Uh, so. Fetch code is uh, still under production. Like uh, uh, in GSOC 2020, we just started it. Okay, so it the project has just begun. Uh, it still has a long way to go. Uh, it's not like uh, still not production ready, uh, but we are working on it to get it ready soon. Yeah, well, one of the problem that Tushar highlighted is the, the difficulty to reuse uh, the pip library pip as a library um, because there's no API. In PIP, so it doesn't expose any documentation. There's no guarantee that the the function you use today will be there tomorrow, and and because of that, um, we we had to render it, and and which means that okay, if there's a bug fix in PIP, it's not going to be as simple as to update the requirements file and give the latest version, or just do a PIP minus upgrade. Uh, install pip to get the latest version that that's not enough but I mean, because our code vendors pip itself we have to actually copy copy uh pip latest version and do the changes uh, so that's that's a, a small difficulty with the, the vendoring approach uh, but that's the only way in the case of pip that we can guarantee that the code doesn't break to tomorrow with a new version of pip because it could otherwise break at any time okay. um, now, on the other hand, we could have said, well, why reuse PIP then? Uh, it's pretty unique in its ability to support uh, Git, Subversion, Mercurial, and, and other version control system with a common clean syntax uh, that's used to express these URLs. And it's been tested on hundreds or millions of downloads, uh, hundreds of millions of downloads, so it's pretty pretty robust. Got it. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, how do you plan to resolve dependencies for packages? Well, I can talk about that. Uh, so now we have this mechanism for, on the one end, naming and identifying dependencies with package URLs. So that's the base. We have the way to parse package manifest. So you have uh, for each package, its dependencies expressed in the same format. And you have eventually version constraints for each of them. And to resolve dependencies, there's really a couple of strategies. The, most, the, the simplest one is to say, 
I have a version that's the man, that's required or version constraints. I'm going to use fetch code to get to the package type API, so the package repository to get all the versions of that package. And I could take a stupid uh, approach which says, give me always the, the latest version. You know, that's going to be wrong, but that's not to be completely bad all the time. Um, another approach is to use a dependency resolver. So pip now, for instance, nowadays use uh, starting anytime now a new library called resolve lib, which provides dependency resolution. So we could use that library across all the package type, or we could use uh, another library called libsolve, uh, which is part of the uh, RPM uh, package uh, management tool uh, and has a Python binding too, uh, which is providing a bit more complex resolution. Another tool called Conda, uh, which is popular in data science for package management, is using something called the uh, uh, PyCosat, which is a, a constraint solver, which using operational research and, and more complex math to actually do package resolution and, and, and satisfying many complex dependencies together. So I think we can do a bit of that, uh, uh, literally using any kind of strategies. The last strategy would be to use the actual package management tool of every package type. But that can be a bit daunting because you would need to have uh, all the package management tool installed. So say, um, if you want to resolve something from Homebrew and and Deb, Debian, and RPM, and PyPy, and Ruby. That would be a bit messy to have all of that. Um, so we're, we're trying to get we're trying to something which will be based on Python and a bit more portable. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, thanks, Ruthir. So I, I briefly had some technical difficulties. But yeah, I'm back now. So yeah, I, I, I heard you a bit about, uh, you know, why how fetch code would be better than using something like Conda. But what, what are your views on something like pip file? Oh, I mean, so pip file, pip file is one of the many package manifests supported by scan code. Mm -hmm. and, and, and don't get me wrong, fetch code and dependent code are not intended to replace Conda or replace mm -hmm. pip or any of that. That's not the goal. It's more, say you have a project and you, have, you want to, to get an idea or a feel for what the dependencies would be. Uh, without having to run all the tools. And maybe you have system packages, so you need to have this and this RPM installed if you're using CentOS. Or you need this and this and this Debian package if you're on Debian. Uh, and if you're on Windows, you need to install these three nuggets. And you have these pip packages, and you have uh, a bunch of node packages for the UI. And that's very common. I mean, pretty much every project that's a bit fletch, fleshed out needs to have system dependencies and two and three different package manager. So the whole idea is to say, how, how is it possible to put our RAN around it in a way that's you know, not running around all these different things and trying to find a common language. We're not trying to replace them at all. It's, it's more being able to collect the information, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll never be doing package installation, for instance. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that really makes sense because a, a whole lot of times, you know, it's it's not just about having all the packages, right? It's also about having the packages on the right environment at the right yeah. time. So, yeah. yeah. Be... Think about all the readme you have on all our Python project, which says, OK, set up. If you are on Windows, you need to install this and this and that. If you're on yeah. Mac, do that. If you're on Linux, do that. Oh, but if you're on Linux, RPM, do this. Debian, do that. Ubuntu. It's almost like Debian, but you still need to do that. I mean, we, we all write this documentation all the time, right? It's a pain. Yeah. So the idea there is to find a way which would be to have something like a, a, a meta package manifest in the end, mm -hmm. which says, run this, and it will start to install the things you need on whatever your environment is and trying to be smart about it. Yeah. So th there's also another question that has come from the crowd, uh, from the audience. So how do you extensively test the software before releasing it to production? So this is a, a little off topic, but I think this is a very important question too. 
sure? Uh, yeah. How, how so, much did I bug you on test? <laughs> <laughs> so, Felipe uh, is a little bit picky about tests. Uh, okay. So, uh, 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 if we see fetch code, like uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, mocking or mocking of data. Okay. Like uh, we have to download URLs. Okay. So, you cannot test the data. You cannot write test cases that are using network calls. Okay. So, you have to mock them. So for mocking, we have used, uh, 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 forgetting the name. Uh, we have, uh, right, uh, for unit test, we uh, took the mock class and we mocked all the data. Okay, like it's, it's a, it was very huge data. So we need to be mocked and we, uh, how can I explain? Uh, uh, like uh, we mocked the data and stored it in files. Okay, then we used it as a function. Okay, like I am fetching this term. Okay. Fetching this URL, so I will feed that URL. It will uh, get the data that has been mocked, okay, and then match the data, match the data that needs to be matched. Uh, that that has been provided, uh, that has been got through library. So we tested it in that way. For VCS, uh, what we did, like we mocked the uh, download function, okay. So in VCS, what we were, what we were getting, we were getting like the which type of VCS it belongs to, like Git, Bazaar, HG, SVN, okay. Then what we are getting like from which a uh, host we, it is coming like GitHub, Bitbucket, or any kind of uh, that, uh, and the like download size of that uh, URL and many other things like that. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think yeah. Uh, the the whole point is uh, eventually uh, that you know you need to mock you need to test the functionality. So maybe you could use mocks, maybe like magic mocks or mock patches. In Python, yeah. I think that is that is precisely what Tushar was getting at. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. The, the the other thing is how do you extensively test the software? There's actually more code for testing than there is actual code for doing the the, the work. The real yeah. There, there's more t in the fetch code library, but that's common in most of the libraries we have. There's more code for testing than there is actual code in the library itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's how it should be because you, you got to test a whole lot of edge cases and many more, you know, different cases, even do stress testing and all of that before you can go to production. Yeah, I yeah. feel that's a crucial yeah. part. And so now, uh, as we're, we're scaling things up, there's uh, there's a new tool called ScanCode.io, which, which is able to run scans on code using ScanCode. And we want eventually to scan everything, like everything from PyPy, everything from RubyGems, everything from Node, and and more. Um, and that will mean that fetch code will have to download each and everything there successfully. So the, when we'll start doing that, there'll be like pretty extensive tests and not mock this time. It's it's really about doing the live downloads on, on uh, potentially hundreds of millions of downloads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot for walking us through all of this. And uh, it was certainly a really nice session on fetch code and how it could be used. Uh, thanks a lot again, uh, Philip and Tashar for joining us. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks thank for inviting us.